Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us on Business Incorporated. Coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. Coming up, the International Monetary Fund says Angola's public debt will narrow this year, but continued fiscal adjustment is needed. Egypt remains committed to repaying the $3.5 billion it owes in arrears to foreign oil companies. Plus, a look at Niger's unemployment burden and how insecurity is creating jobs. Let's get started. We'll begin uh, with the markets and started here in Africa. Nigeria and South Africa's markets are in the green at intraday, a day after the central bank of the two countries left their monetary policy rates unchanged. In the meantime, Egypt reversed its gains to fall back to the 12,000 mark despite its planned international bond sale. Now, at intraday, Nigeria's market was up 0.08%. Johannesburg Stock Exchange, 0.22%. Uh, of course, Egypt um, Stock Exchange was trading down 0.92%. And Kenya, of course, at 0.62% uh, as of yesterday. On the Middle East markets, um, of course, most of them are mostly lower, with Saudi Arabia leading the region, up 0.76% at intraday. All the markets we track on this program were tilted um, southwards. Abu Dhabi, uh, which was trading 4,680, was down 1.55%. Dubai financial markets was down 1.11%. And Qatar Stock Exchange was down 0.01%, and there is Saudi Stock Exchange in the green of 0.76%. In Europe, shares were higher in morning trade as investors took cues from overseas markets and digested fresh earnings, uh, earnings reports. Meanwhile, a member of the European Central Bank has hinted that the bank could soon start planning tapering its monetary stimulus. Now let's get more on the market with Conrad Boosen, DWTV Channel's TV financial correspondent there. Good afternoon, Conrad. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Our top European Central Bank official signaled on Tuesday that the ECB should soon start to wind down its asset buying program. What are the implications uh, for European banks and, of course, investors? Well, Jimmy, it means that both banks and investors have to be more on guard, of course, uh, with the European Central Bank eventually cutting back its asset purchases. This means that, uh, of course, some of the banks which still heavily rely on the constant stream of cheap money from the Central Bank might not be happy, they might face problems, but of course the overall implications for banks and for the markets and for the economy are rather positive. Remember. Those asset purchases were um, introduced after the financial crisis of 2008 and 2009 and during the recession that followed that financial crisis as a rescue measure, as an emergency rescue measure for the banks, the markets and the economy. So that now that uh, the ECB slowly considers cutting back on those uh, rescue measures means that uh, times are getting a bit more normal again. Uh, that uh, the financial markets and the economy don't need those rescue measures anymore. Of course, all this implies that eventually also interest rates uh, will be rising, also here in the Eurozone, and um, the uh, markets are pricing this in. The yield on German 10-year government bonds, which are a big, a big benchmark here, climbed to 0.3% today, quite a significant increase from yesterday. Of course, 0.3% is not much, but it's much more than the negative yields we saw here in the course of 2016. Now, um, Conrad, today, Governor Mark Kearney of the Bank of England is expected to speak in Germany at a Bundes conference. Now, what are investors hoping to hear? Well, uh, first off, the title or the topic of that conference doesn't really give a clue. I can quote it. The title is Digitizing Finance, Financial Inclusion and Financial Literacy. Of course, people on the markets are not expecting and they're not expecting 
anxious to hear from Mark Carney about those topics. What they want to hear is what he has to say about Brexit, about inflation expectations, and uh, you know whether he will give indications that the Bank of England will continue to stand ready to give the markets and the economy, the liquidity, the money it needs, whatever the uh, events of the Brexit negotiations will looks like, look like. What's also very interesting is that um, two other people are going to take part in that Bundesbank conference today. Wolfgang Schäuble, the German finance minister, and of course the Bundesbank chief Jens Weidmann, both not exactly friends of a very generous monetary policy and of course both not really friends of Brexit. I wonder whether we are going to hear um, a few controversial statements from those gentlemen today. Well Brexit seems to be the hot topic um, there. Let's hope um, Akani tries to make some comments on that. I'm sure the market will be waiting to hear. In any case, oil and gas stocks seem to be on the radar this Wednesday after U.S. President Donald Trump signed orders for new oil pipelines in the country. How are the oil and gas stocks in Europe where you are behaving today? Well, they are part of a very strong upstream, if I may put it that way, on the stock market in general here in Europe today. Look at the German DAX, nicely higher. It's climbed on the highest point since summer 2015 today, and even stronger today, uh, the German mid caps and the small caps, the medium sized and smaller sized comp uh, companies, their indices uh, which describe those sectors climb to new record highs today. Of course, uh, there are investors out there who like what they have, uh, what, what Mr. Trump and his team have to say during the first days of uh, the new administration in the U.S. Deregulation of oil pipelines, deregulation also of the financial sector, uh, all 